بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear sisters and daughters It's very happy to meet you again in our new episode of أسماء الله الحسنى أو The Beautiful Names of Allah uh, Alhamdulillah, with the bounty and the favor of Allah, we continue this our uh, fourth episode about uh, uh, the beautiful names of Allah. And I hope uh, it uh, the previous episodes was uh, uh, of uh, benefits for all of you. Uh, in the beginning, I would like to uh, thank all uh, my daughters uh, that already uh, sent to me their opinion about the previous names of Allah. Uh, including um, uh, Ruqayya and Laraib, uh, Fatma and um, uh, also Heba. Um, I'd like to thank all of them. Actually, they did great job and uh, their input was very fruitful. Uh, what I want to say again, if you want to write an essay about uh, any name, I will tell you later on about Asma'ullah al-Husna. So, um, uh, just you focus on the benefits usually as we are doing every um, uh, we when we end the uh, at the end of the, each name we are giving you the benefits so it's very important to focus on the benefits of every name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so at the beginning at the beginning I would like to welcome all the newcomers today our new sisters and the one who already with us uh, and I wish you all happy Ramadan inshallah and Ramadan Mubarak for all of our sisters and um, uh, inshallah uh, this Ramadan will be different from previous Ramadans that we will focus more we will be near to Allah inshallah more we will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his guidance to us and to help us in um, accept our deeds, inshallah. Uh, back to uh, our episode today, as we mentioned, usually this hadith that you are seeing in front of you, this hadith sahih about um, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Muhammad Just said that birdie, mm -hmm. Allah has 99 names. So, uh, the one who counted or to know them will enter the paradise so uh, how to know the names of allah as we mentioned before to know the names of allah is to uh, believe in them number one and to work according to them this is very important that you have to believe in them and to work uh, in your life according to uh, these names so uh, inshallah our uh, we have the names uh, uh, today with us Al Aziz. Today we'll take the name of Allah Al Aziz or Almighty. In English, it's Almighty. So Al Aziz uh, or Almighty. What is the meaning or the definition of the word Al Aziz or the Almighty? Uh, Almighty is the one who overpowers everything and who can't be overcome. No one can overcome him, and he is overpowering everything. Uh, Al-Aziz is the one who is extremely precious and none is like them or like him. Uh, Al-Aziz is unbeatable, which means that he will, no one can beat him and no one can defeat him. Nothing can prevent him from fulfilling what he wills. Nothing can prevent him from fulfilling what he wills. Uh, Al-Aziz also have the meaning of everything needs him for uh, everything. All the creatures need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything they are doing in this life. And also Al-Aziz got the meaning that he's too difficult to reach and none can, could ever encompass him in knowledge. We cannot put the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we know Allah by our hearts. So uh, again, Al-Aziz is me, have the, these four meanings 
the one who's overpower everything, everything is overpowered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one can overcome him. Number two, the one who is extremely precious and none like them, none, nobody like him, unbeatable, and uh, he needs, uh, everything needs him and so difficult to reach. This is very important to know the, uh, the names or different meanings of the uh, name of Allah Al-Aziz. Uh, today, we'll take three names, inshallah, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbir. The three names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the character of power and proudness. And uh, it's difficult, to, it's, it's, sorry, it's different from what we took before about the Rahman and the Rahim. He's here, the group of characters we have is related to their power and strength and proudness. All this will come uh, with us during uh, passing through these uh, three names. So, uh, Al-Aziz, how to know the name of Allah Almighty, the, all, the Almighty in Quran? Uh, we have in Quran the first uh, ayah, if you punish them, they are your slaves. And if you forgive them verily, you, only you, are the Al-Aziz, or Almighty, and all-wise. Uh, it's actually, um, it was, uh, this ayah was uh, said by the Prophet Isa alayhi salam when he talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the people of the Christianity that they disbelieved and they um, worshipped three gods uh, as they are saying. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask Prophet Isa uh, in the hereafter and he will tell him are you the one who told those people to worship three gods or make you a god like me? Then uh, Prophet Isa, of course, he will say no. I would just convey the message for them to just worship only one ilah and I am a human being like them. So if you're going to forgive them, verily, you are the Aziz, the Almighty, All-Wise. Almighty, All-Wise, this is very important because All-Wise, most of the Quran, if you're going to uh, bath by the word, by the name of Allah Al-Aziz, you will find its association with Al-Wise or Al-Hakim in Arabic. Usually it is Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, which is very important actually associations between these two names because Al-Aziz alone is a proudness and the stress and the power, but Al-Hakim is wise because you may find someone who has very proud of himself and this proudness is unwise. He may transgress others. He may uh, make bad things to others. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his proudness is associated and is accompanied by his uh, wise, all wise. That's why most of the ayahs in Quran, you will see the Al-Aziz with Al-All Wise or Al-Hakim. Another ayah, and he's alone in the majesty in the heavens and the earth. And he alone is Al-Aziz, Almighty Al- and Al-Hakim, All-Wise again uh, in this ayah. So, uh, we come here to the word Izza. Izza in Arabic, uh, or it, it's in English means might, honor, and power. All these are the names or the meanings of Al-Izza. Uh, we'll find uh, Al-Izza came in many surahs in Quran. Um, we want to know, uh, we will take just, I, I took from uh, this um, site uh, or three, th these words, three ayahs. The first ayah is came from the hypocrites or in Surah Al-Munafiqoon. Surah Al-Munafiqoon is the hypocrites surah where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they, the hypocrites say, if we return to Medina, Indeed, the mightier will expel from it the less mighty. But Izza, or might, honor, and power, belongs to Allah, to his messenger, and to the believers. But the hypocrites know not. Well, actually, here the ayah is, um, is, uh, is telling us the story about the hypocrites in Medina when they were with Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. That at, uh, they, at um, a very high degree, they were um, hate, hating uh, the Muslims and the prophets and during one of the battles or the Ghazawat where Prophet Muhammad was there and here they assumed that he would not return back and they wished actually 
uh, that he will not turn back and say and said one the one who said that also is the one of the leader of them his name was uh, Abdullah ibn Ubay uh, ibn Abi ibn Salul and he was the leaders of the hypocrites in Medina and he's the one who said that uh, sentence when we return back to Medina the mightier will expel from it the less mighty and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's, re he's replying to him by saying وَلِلَّهِ لَعِزَّةِ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ عِزَّةِ is belongs to Allah and to his messenger and to the believers وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقُونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ but the hypocrites know not and so this is the word عِزَّةِ came here which giving us that uh, usually the عِزَّةِ uh, is for the believers if you are looking for the might for the owner so you are looking to be one of the believers the Izzah goes to the believers the believers of what believer of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger muhammad uh, the, the second ayah glorified is your lord the lord of Izzah, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, uh, from what they attribute to him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, his attribute is Izza or the owner the third ayah i swear by your Izzah, might owner and power that i will surely mislead them this ayah came by uh, who said this ayah shaitan the shaitan said after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he um, um, just told him his final decision about being away from uh, the jannah and will be through to the hellfire after he refused to prostrate to uh, prophet adam alayhi salam so he said he swore by the izza the izza of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will uh, surely mislead the mankind but of course in other ayahs allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied to him that uh, his true believers the shaitan will not have any authority on those believers then we'll go to the benefits as we are doing every uh, with every name what we are benefiting or what is the benefits goes for, to us from the name of allah al-aziz we said before that we are studying the names of allah uh, just to know allah number one and to increase our belief in him to make him in our mind uh, most of the time or supposed to be all of the time to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our mind and before any other person and to call him one of the supplication one of the dua that we are going to do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to call him to supplicate him by his name and we are choosing the name according to the situation that we are on if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us so we said al ghafur ya ghafur ighfir lana uh, ya ghafur forgive us ya rahim irhamna uh, here al aziz when we are going to make supplication with aziz what we can say that ya aziz a'izzana ya aziz a'izz ummatana which means make our muslim nation is bright is glorious this is um, very important that we are choosing the name that uh, for al aziz what we need from al aziz to make us proud of being muslims to make the Muslim nations being in a proudness, in an honor, that uh, as we mentioned uh, in the previous ayah, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةِ and the عِزَّةِ for, for Allah and Messenger and the believers. Who believers? Any believers? No. The true believers, that they are really believing in Allah and in His Messenger and start working on that. So this is how to call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His name, Al-Aziz. Uh, number two, you should comply to his commands and do the deeds of rightness if you desire to reach him. As we mentioned that one of the uh, names of Allah, of the meaning of the Al-Aziz is that the different, the difficult to reach. So I want to be, I want to be near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to be in a good relation with Allah. How to do that? Do by doing his commands and go, do, do, do the good deeds. So you reach him and to be intimate to him. And this is the only way. Also, how can I do that? By serving other slaves, by uh, us, other slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the earth, either Muslim or not Muslim. Any fellow humans do good to all people. 
If you know Al Aziz, it's impossible that you humble yourself to any other human being or creature. This is very important. That if we know really Al Aziz, so we know all the proudness goes to Allah, or or the power and the strength goes to Allah. So I will not make myself humiliated to any person because we are all the people are the slaves of Allah. This is another point. If you know Allah, you see no might or honor except with Him. You see no power except Him. You see no wisdom except His. That's why Allah, most gracious in a divine hadith, the hadith al Qudsi, and we know that the divine hadith is hadith Qudsi, said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Prophet Muhammad is uh, the one who told us about it, which is different from Quran. The Quran is. Uh, that the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words uh, and that we can do prayer with it. But in Hadith Qudsi, it's just Allah is, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad is saying what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to say in a divine Hadith. So in a divine Hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, which being stated by Prophet Muhammad, O son of Adam, seek me, for if you find me, you find everything. But if you miss me, you miss everything. And I am more beloved to you than everything. See Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us. He's talking to all of us. See how much he loved us. See how much he is calling on us. And we are away from him. We are thinking about many other things. We are thinking about how to be rich, how to be, how to be famous, how to be loved by others how to do so and so and so. All this can come to you if you just make your love only one love. Love to Allah. The true love is the love to Allah. Because Allah is the one who created us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who we are belong to him. And the most one who deserve our love. If we just make all our intentions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all our desires to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all our hopes to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in another hadith, everything you need in life, it will come to you. You will not bother yourself. You will not bother yourself or thinking of anything. When you come with all your feelings, all your heart, all your thinking to Allah and ask, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, then everything will come to you. Everything will come to you. It doesn't mean that you have to leave the work in your life or leave how to um, earn money by, by, by honest means or this thing. No, it doesn't mean like this. You mean that you work, you go to your work in the morning and in the evening you come and in the night you uh, read Quran, start praying, ask from Allah help. But Allah is number one in your mind. If you put Allah number one in your mind and love him truly and you seek him as he say in his, this hadith, seek me, find me, you will find everything. Because simply, in a simple words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he is the one created all the creatures and he has the heart of all the people. If you want someone to be near you because you like him or love him, he'll bring it to you because he means he can change the hearts of the people. You find someone is coming to you, say, I love you, I like you, I want to be your friend, I want to... Why? Why is people is coming? Because Allah changed their heart to you. Why Allah changed their hearts to you? Because you believed only in Allah and come with all your feelings to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what you need, what you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it to you. And of course, to bring the, 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 the thing that it is good. Because sometimes people are thought that uh, they will have uh, the happiness in being very rich or happiness to being very beautiful or happiness to being very famous. It's not a must, by the way. Not all the very famous or the very rich or the very uh, having wealthy people are happy in their life. Happiness is to feel in your heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with you. This is the true happiness. The true happiness is to seek Allah in your heart. If you seek Allah in your heart and you find Allah in your heart, number one, so you are a true believer. Then if you wish to be honorable, glorious, and respected by others, we have to obey Al-Aziz. 
here uh, we finished uh, the name of Allah Al Aziz and we go to the name of Allah Al Jabbar. It is another name of power that belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Al Jabbar. Al Jabbar is mean having um, two means, mainly two means. The first one is the compeller, compeller. Whatever he wills, what happens? Whatever he will is what happens. Everything is under his control. Whatever he wills, this will happen. He is the one who is exalted high. This is another meaning, high above his creation. He can't be encompassed by human minds, nor can be seen by human eyes or perceived by the human minds. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third meaning of Al-Jabbar is uh, one who reforms, the one who fixes the situation for his creation, fixes everything and reforms everything. How to know the name of Allah? So again, this is the three meaning of Al-Jabbar. The first one is a compeller. The second is high above his creation. The third is the reforming or fixation of the situation for his creation. Uh, how to know the name of Allah by the ayah in Surah Al-Hashr? He is Allah other than whom there is no ilah, the sovereign, um, the pure, the perfection, the pastor of faith. We, we took over all, all these uh, names before. The overseer is exalted in mind, the compeller. This is our name here and the superior. Exalted is Allah above whatever they associate with him. Okay. What is the benefit of the name of Allah Al-Jabbar? What I can benefit to me, apply to my life by knowing the name of Allah Al-Jabbar? Again, call him by his name. When I call him by his name, I'm telling I have to know the meaning because if I'm going to call or supplicate Allah, I have to know which name I choose. We have here Al-Jabbar, we have the two meanings. The main two meanings is a compeller that everything his, comes with his will. So if you wish something to happen, is ask Al-Jabbar, Al-Jabbar, Ya Jabbar, Ya Jabbar, Ujburni, Ya Jabbar, uh, 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 help me and protect me. And uh, here is the other meaning of Al-Jabbar, which is the fixation, the fixation or um, helping others by fixing, by consoling the weak by uh, doing uh, uh, something that you need his support. So if you need him to, when you are in a weak position and you need the support, you ask Al-Jabbar to fix your position, to help you. And actually uh, in Arabic meaning, the word uh, Al-Jabbar is coming from Jubaira. Jubaira is the, you know, when the person is broken, he has a broken leg in his uh, bones. So they put for him a, 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 like a cost. It's usually a different type of cost. Cost, a below knee cost or above knee cost, whatever. But this cost is to support the broken bones until um, one month coming later. After that, fusion of the bones happen and start to walk again on his leg. So this, the Al-Jabira, which is cost, this cost helps, helps to fusion, the fusion of the broken bones. So if we can take this, meaning which is fusion of the broken if you have something broken in your heart something hurted you ask allah al-jabbar to help fix fixing these broken parts our broken feelings or broken hearts or whatever you have broken ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his name al-jabbar to fix this breaking part ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-jabbar by his compeller by his uh, authority on someone who transgressed you someone who did bad thing for you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring your right to bring your right from such a person that's why i'm coming to that i coming to uh, this character if it's present in human being this is the last point we're going through but now i am focusing that i uh, ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, by his name al jabbar by his name al jabbar to protect me and to fix my broken feelings by his name Al-Jabbar and to bring to me my right from the one who transgressed me. Because 
In the second point, Allah is Al-Jabbar who will console the weak and he is all the Jabbar who will destroy the unjust and tyrannical. Al-Jabbar is Allah who sets all things right, gives victory to his religion, makes easy all difficult things, console and comforts the broken and miserable. So we have to trust in Allah by his name Al-Jabbar. To know how high and glory is Allah, Al-Jabbar, can't possibly be perceived by the minds, nor can be seen by the eyes. This is all it comes to us when we say the name of Allah, Al-Jabbar. The uh, last point is to be kind to others and don't be compeller. Compeller, as we said, this is one of the meaning of Al-Jabbar, is try to have authority of others and everything to be done immediately as it comes an order from you. Trying to have a character, if you do this, so you are trying to have a character of Allah. Character belongs to Allah, which is the compeller. And you shouldn't do that for human beings, actually, because it considered to be a very bad character and shouldn't be for uh, his servants, for, for Allah's servants. Allah's servants should be very modest to others and uh, humble to others and can uh, help others so that they shouldn't have this character. We'll go through now the third name, which is Al-Mutakabbir. Al-Mutakabbir also one who is the same group, including the Supreme. Uh, his greatness and power at every moment, his great, whose divine greatness is infinite. Sover his sovereignty, dominion, uh, dominion and greatness are imperishable, who is far above any kind of imperfection or defect that doesn't befit his divine per perfection. And this is the uh, complete of the uh, picture, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supreme to all other things, how he's great, how he's um, uh, away, away from imperfection. We have the same ayah that we mentioned before. So how we can benefit from the name of Allah Al-Mutakabbir again to call him by his name when I need his victory, when I need victory to me, someone transgressed me, someone who uh, did bad, very bad things to me, I want my right, I ask Al-Mutakabbir to realize the greatness of such name uh, for protection and guidance, to be humble, Again, to, uh, to Allah by doing his uh, worshipping Allah properly and humiliation and the need to him and also to be humble to other Muslims and to help them and not to take such character because such character is belongs only to Allah. Don't to be supreme on others, don't to feel great on others. And there is hadith Qudsi by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that the bra the al izatu ridai wal kibriya izari, which means that the Almighty is for me, the, the Almighty is for me, and the all proud is my rope. And anyone who fights me in such character, I threw him to Jahannam, I threw him to uh, the fire, which means that this character shouldn't be for a human being. Feeling of being supreme extra proudness is like having a character which belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is very considered very negative and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making uh, in Quran say in many ayahs for many surahs that those who are al-mutakabbirun or the, 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 the taking this character from his slaves will have a very um, uh, punishment, a severe punishment in the hereafter because uh, they tried to imitate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of his character which is uh, the extra proudness or the proudness. Uh, so um, I will stop here actually because uh, we finished uh, the three uh, names for today. Um, Yani, jazakum Allah khairan for your uh, attendance and I have still five minutes. If you have anything, you can go to the chat room and you can write your chatting or anything you want to ask about or to clarify of uh, today's episode.
Mahinoor, I have it. Jazakum Allah khairan wa iyaakum habibti. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mahinoor. Uh, Inshallah, uh, next time it will be on uh, Ramadan at the same time. Uh, I hope that uh, today's uh, characters are uh, um, very impressive, actually, um, um, impressive to all of us. Uh, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Mutakabbar. I hope that my daughters can one of them um, uh, or the one who wishes to write an essay about these three names and she can send me my, on my email. And as I mentioned, um, I prefer not to uh, send you the presentation now because actually I need you to search and to come with your ideas about the names of Allah. I want you to add to me, like our um, our daughter Ruqayya actually, she added to me, to my knowledge, Laraib, mashallah, excellent. Uh, her essay, Fatma and uh, Heba, all of them, they did great job. Jazakumullah uh, khairan, I really, Amina also, uh, thank you so much. So please, please try to make an essay about the names of Allah, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbar, and just press on the point how to apply the knowledge of such a name in our life, how we can get benefits of this. Um, Jazakum Allah khairan, yes. Okay, thank you so much. So now uh, another thing I want to announce, inshallah, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow at the same time at 3 p.m. also, we'll have um, a 30 minute only like this one episode about uh, Welcome Ramadan. A lecture with the title Welcome Ramadan. I have the pleasure to give this lecture to all of you because actually I realized that Ramadan is coming and we didn't say anything about Ramadan. So it gives me a great pleasure if you can join me tomorrow at the same time, 3 p.m. with UK time that we're going to have a lecture with the title Welcome Ramadan, how to welcome Ramadan, how to do in Ramadan, what's the uh, meaning of fasting, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to, from us to fast. All these things, we're going to take it in points just to make it easier for all of us and uh, just to begin the Ramadan with a good, um, good spirit and uh, to be optimistic, inshallah, this Ramadan will be the best of the best. Any other questions? I have to go. Any other questions? You have 30 seconds, please. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And Jazakumullah khairan. I'm appreciating your attendance. And I hope uh, this lecture, uh, it came to your, take your needs. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and your families and keep you safe. And meet you inshallah tomorrow. If you want to come, of course. If you don't want, it's okay. Uh, so I hope to meet you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk.